Good morning and welcome to Coffee Talk. I want to share a story with you and it's really, really important to me that you listen. I know you always listen, but listen a little harder. <laughs> um, a while back, I had an idea for a movie. So I reached out to one of my producer friends who I worked with on American Pie. Um, and he said, this is a great movie. Fast forward to us taking that movie, that treatment that I wrote, to Will Packer, who's one of the biggest um, film producers in the country, like Ride Along, Think Like a Man, The Wedding Ringer, all of those big comedies. And this was a thriller. This was a different kind of movie. So we call, we get it, we get a meeting with Will's like head of production, uh, a woman named Barbara Dreyfus, whose reputation precedes her. She's no nonsense, tells it like it is. If she doesn't like something, it's dead. But she's fair and, you know, you hear all these things about her and as a woman, you, you know, it's a little like nerve wracking. So I was super intimidated by Barbara. And we get the meeting, we pitch the movie. She loves it. Wow. It's huge. So long story short, we start going through the process of putting this movie together. I haven't told you guys about it yet because it hasn't been officially announced. And when it is, we'll all celebrate, but really listen to this story. So, um, sorry, I can't find my words today. Okay, so Babs and I, as we began to call her, because those who knew her well called her Babs, um, we started doing that weird dance that women do when there are two women in certain positions of power, um, the natural thought is not, let's see how well we can work together. It's let's see which one of us will edge in front and keep the other one at bay. And we were as guilty as anyone else, both of us, fast out of the gate, trying desperately to get a leg ahead of each other. And it was, you could feel it in emails, you could feel it on the phone, and then one day I was in LA for a meeting and with them and I was wearing my leather jacket. For those of you who watch Jersey Bell, you know I don't go far without it. Sorry, my eyes are killing me. And um, Babs commented on the jacket. She's like, oh, that jacket is perfection. I love it. And um, I decided that I was gonna track one down and get it for her. They don't make my leather jacket anymore. So I called the publicist from Zara and she helped me track one down. I went, when I was in New York, I picked it up and I took it back to LA with me. And I surprised Babs at our next meeting. And it was the move that calmed the beast in both of us. It was a peace offering that she knew took a lot of effort and meant a lot because she knew what my leather jacket meant to me. She knew it was my protection, right? I put on my leather jacket, I feel like Jamie makes me feel confident. So to share that confidence with her, give her a piece of that knowing that we could be in the same place wearing the same jacket was a peace offering. It was a my way of saying like, look, we could do this together or we could do it apart, but together would be a lot easier. She loved the jacket. Um, and one day after that, I was in LA and she asked me to meet her for breakfast and I did. And she said, I want to be really honest with you. I was very intimidated by you. You are young. You are driven. You are highly successful in everything that you try to do. People gravitate towards you and you exude kindness above all, which is intimidating because you get to where you want to be 
using a different method than most. You see, that's the thing. We're so used to women clawing each other and fighting each other to get to the top. But I, and I was, and I was that for a long time. But now I don't do that anymore. I try to just be me and be kind and include people and humble myself when need be. Anyway, I said to her, Babs, to hear you say you were intimidated by me blows my mind because you are everything in business as a woman that I have ever wanted to be. Like you are, you're the... You are the head of production. You are and development. You you you're the queen bee, the mecca. Your reputation. I mean, you've been in this business twenty plus years. You're, I mean, you're amazing. And it was this. I thought Babs didn't like me, and that's why she was acting that way. Long story short, we have this great breakfast, where we both laugh and cry and be very honest about the direction our lives have taken. And she tells me that she watched Jersey Bell every episode and that she loved it and loved my relationship with my husband and helped, gave me really important lessons about what to fight for and what to let go and in business and in life. And I listened because I valued her and I listened. After that breakfast, Babs and I were like this. We spoke twice a week. Very excited about our movie together. We were a team. It was awesome. We were the only two women in the room. All Everybody else was men. And that was fine with us. But we were a team together. It's not to say that we didn't have our tit for tat. Because we did. But it was a healthy tit for tat. And it came from a, a healthy competitive place. I flew into LA on Wednesday and um, my plane was an hour delayed in Dallas. So by the time I landed in Los Angeles to get all the way to Universal Studios for the meeting would have been impossible. I was heartbroken because A, I wanted to see everybody and B, I wanted to be in that room. You know, it's, it was my idea and I wanted to be there. Uh, but I knew, I called Babs and I told her what was going on. She said, kiddo, we'll get you on the phone. You'll listen in. I'll make sure you can hear everything. And she did. I sat in the lobby of my hotel for an hour on this call. And she stopped when she needed to stop and said, Jamie, are you keeping up? Can you hear everything? And that was Wednesday night. Thursday, I called her at the office and I said, listen, I have something for you. I got her a state of style New York pendant because she lives in L.A., but she is a New Yorker, 100%. And she always loved my, loves my jersey pendant, so I, I got her a New York one. And I said, I have something for you. And we talked and tried to figure out a way to make to meet, but it wasn't meant to be. I, I couldn't get to where she was and she couldn't leave and it was, you know. Yesterday, I left LA and I flew from LA to Dallas and while I was sitting on the Dallas plane, one of the partners from my movie called me and said, are you sitting down? And I said, I am, I'm on the plane. And he said, they found Barbara dead this morning. I said, what? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> he said, they found her dead. And I said, no. It's not possible because I just spoke to her. And he said, I know, but they did. She was found in her home yesterday morning. And I share this story with you to celebrate Babs. She reminded me that no matter how successful you are, in any part of your life, it is okay to admit that you still feel intimidated at times, that you can feel less than but come back from that and still be giving of yourself, M mentor others. You can annoy the crap out of people but be so awesome at what you do that they have no choice but to celebrate that. 
and also to remind you that life is a gift afforded to us every day and it changes in an instant in an instant I think I'm in shock and I was reading the comments that people wrote online yesterday about her passing a lot of people in shock they don't understand um but the words that they said about this woman, about her tenacity and her drive and her focus and what a great mom she is, all the things, what a good friend she is, what a hard worker, I, everything that you would want someone to say about your life, giving, kind, great mom, dedicated, hardworking, and I just go, God, man, Billy Joel was right. Only the good die young. It's like, I am better because I knew her. I am better because I worked with her. But share your smiles with people. Give them away. You've got millions. Don't hold them inside you. Be kind to everybody that you meet because Tomorrow is literally not promised to them or you or me and the human connection and working past our issues and growing together is why we are here. It is what serves us. It is why we, we were created. So put the work in and be good to each other. I love you today. Have a great day.